Close your eyes, focus on your breath. And try to stay right here. As for everything else, you just let it go. Your concerns at home, your concerns at work, your concerns about the world outside. You can carry them around for only so long. There needs to be a time where the mind can put down its burdens and just be by itself. Life is a struggle, but we can't keep fighting all the time. There have to come times when we rest, and we have to choose our battles. This is why equanimity is such an important principle. There's so many things that you cannot fight, that you cannot be responsible for, even though they call out for attention. You realize you've got to have your priorities. You want to be clear about your priorities. As for things that are of a lesser importance for your life or the state of your mind, you have to put them aside. Be equanimous about them. I know of a general in the army, a woman general, who every day at the beginning of the day would make a list of the ten most important things that had to be done that day, and then she would strike out everything except for the first two, focus on those. And then if as the day progressed, those two were taken care of, then she might think about the other ones. But otherwise she would put them out of her mind. So that's what you're doing when you practice equanimity. You're taking things, you're putting them out of your mind so you can focus on the things that have to stay in your mind. Which means that equanimity is selective. And it's going to depend on what needs to be done day by day by day. How large the realm of your equanimity has to extend. Of course, someday it's going to have to extend to everything in this lifetime. When the time comes to go, you have to let everything go. If you hang on to things, then you come back to whatever you're holding on to. I was staying with the John Fuang. There are times when he'd be teaching in Bangkok. And Saturday evenings he would be free. People who came to see him usually would come in the middle of the day on Saturday. And so he'd take a brief stroll around the monastery where he was teaching. It was a funeral monastery. There are lots of pavilions where they're having funerals, where they place the coffin in one end of the pavilion and the people sitting and monks chanting. He came back one evening and he said, you know, the number of people who die and still hang around their bodies is really large. Well, you don't want to be in a position like that where you can't let go of your body. You can't let go of your concerns of your family, your concerns of this lifetime. Because otherwise you'd just be a, a ghost hanging around. That's not a good place to be. So there will come times when you have to let go of everything. And so when you meditate, we're getting practice with that. You're holding on to your breath. You're holding on to your concentration. But for the time being, let everything else go. Get well practiced in that. So when the time comes for the mind to be on its own totally, you can let go of the breath, let go of the body, and just be by itself and then move on to whether it's good karma is going to go. So have practice in putting things down. Then be selective in what you pick up. Because equanimity has to be defended by discernment. And that way it becomes not a defeatist attitude, but simply the attitude of a wise warrior who knows how to choose his or her battles. and not get distracted by other things, so that you can focus on what really needs to be done right now. Straighten out your mind. Make sure there's a good mind to go with wherever you go, because that's your true possession. <laughs>